So, hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I run uh, Nordic Anglers, where you can find all the fly tying materials you would ever need and also the full material kit for this fly. This is uh, an adaptation of, uh, of a Danish, uh, well, world-renowned uh, fly that's called the Patagris. Um, but but this, is, uh, this is a variant of, of that uh, theme, because basically uh, the, the spay capes that are used for the Patagris is, uh, is currently completely out of stock everywhere. Um, so so um, this is uh, a way of making a shrimp fly that resembles that one um, with, with the best materials available. So uh, we're going to do a, a shrimp today, a, a craft for a shrimp in the, uh, in the salmon pink color. Um, perfect for sea trouts all over, but also for, I, I imagine, any, any type of species that, uh, that feed on shrimp. Uh, the thing uh, we're going to do today is we're going to use a, a slightly shorter hook than normal, and then we're going to add, uh, we're going to make this articulated by adding, uh, adding a shank to this pattern. So uh, this fly is very, very lively in its own right, but uh, by, by adding the shank here, we makes this, uh, it makes this fly even more lively. So. Uh, stay tuned and watch how we tie um, the craft fur pedigrees on a shank. <laughs> what a fit today! Yes. So, here it is the uh, shank. The shank. Pedigrees uh, with Kreffer instead of with uh, the uh, the spay hackle, which is regretfully uh, quite hard to come by. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tie the first section of the fly, um, and of course you can apply this to any saltwater pattern that that you like, and and you would probably go for a more uh, stronger, more uh, thick wired hook uh, if if you're targeting, let's say. Uh, some type of, of a tropical species, but um, for but for the coastal the coastal sea trout fishing which which this fly is intended, then this uh, this is a this is the perfect hook. This is the uh, Erix uh, Gamarus uh, in size six, um, and the first thing we need is is to tie down something that's gonna that's gonna imitate the mouth parts. So I'm gonna take a natural teal feather here. Now that one wasn't perfect. I think this one will do. I'm gonna pull off all the furry part and then I'm gonna also remove the tip with my nails basically. And then you can just mangle this up and, and you'll get a, a, a nice looking a nice looking kind of a tail that makes a bit of contrast with this full feather here. There we go. Cut off the, uh, the feather. And then I'm going to take one of these shrimp eyes and <laughs> the shrimp eyes are, are these really, really cool, um, sh <laughs> well, basically shrimp eyes. Um, but I, I had one in uh, in here, the last one I had in black, I don't want to open a new uh, new new box, is, is one that for some reason uh, I think has been used. I've cut away some of the, uh, <laughs> some of the bud here, but, but that's just how it is now. So I'm going to attach this here on top of the on top of the hook there we go tie this down so it's it's aligned and in in place so you have again again this is is to add contrast to the fly here i should have gone with a new bag stephen <laughs> I should have gone the extra mile and spent a bit more money. <laughs> oh, it, it works, it works. As you can see, the eyes here are now aligned and, and, and looking good. Well, you know, I'm going to take a new bag anyway any day because I need to tie some for the box, you know. But but now we're in the middle of, of our mojo and doing our thing here and tying flies, so yeah, bear with me. I think that the, the actual mouth parts, the, the tail here was a bit underdressed, so I'm, I'm just going to add a bit more teal. You could have done that in the first go, but uh, you know. There we go. So, 
And now in the original pattern, you'd have to tie down a couple of feathers and and if you have the spade, then, then definitely try doing that. You'll need uh, three hackles in order to complete this uh, this fly here if, if you want to, to to use the shank. But I'm just going to use some uh, some craft fur um, because this, it's it's fast and it's easy and it is the closest thing you can get to the actual whiting spay feathers at the moment. So um, so so we're going to use this. This is the rainy craft fur, the best craft fur out there, um, and. I'm gonna take a bundle of this. This is the salmon pink one. I'm gonna take a bundle of this from the, uh, well, not leather, but from the piece of whatever this is it's attached to. And, and now I have my bundle here. And what I need to do is is to need to prepare this a bit so it 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 gets it gets um, it gets perfect for for my usage. So I'm gonna take all the really long ones. And then I'm gonna pull them back, pull them out, and then realign them with some of the others. So I don't get a completely uniform, but I get a bit more uniform bundle of craft fur. And I'm gonna hold on to that, and I'm gonna take my comb here. This is a CF Design comb. It's it's a bit expensive, but it's it's a comb of a lifetime. So you know. Why not have something that you can just rely on and, and be happy with and, and just completely enjoy for ever? Not many things you can say about <laughs> that you, you can enjoy that forever. But you, I promise you this will, will never, um, never break down or anything. <laughs> so um, now I have my bundle of craft fur here. I'm going to try to get it... Mm, Distributed between my fingers, so it's it's going to be easier for me to actually have it uh, all the way around the hook here. And I'm going to measure it out, so it, it will be maybe three or four centimeters longer than the uh, than the than where the the hook ends uh, to give it that uh, that wavy, uh, really nice feel and look of the uh, of the spay uh, spay feathers. Then I'm going to make two loose turns in order to get it tied down here. And then I'm going to apply more pressure after that. I'm going to tie it all the way up to where the eyes were tied on. And then I'm going to, with my scissors here, I'm going to make sure that the fibers are aligned correctly and on the correct side of the, uh, of the hook here. Oh, there you have the first part of this. I'm gonna move my tying thread towards the eye here. Cut all that away. There we go. And as I said, this really, really looks well in the water. It's uh, there is a difference between this and the uh, and the actual spay cape, but but it's it, it, this is as I said as close as you can get. Then I'm gonna make a dubbing loop with my tying thread. Fasten that. Move the tying thread all the way up to the eye. And then I'm gonna take some of the uh, SLF saltwater dubbing which is of course the original dubbing for the original pedigrees. This has a lot of, uh, a lot of not UV, but, uh, but it reflects a lot of, uh, what is that called? Fluorescence. Yeah, fluorescence. So I'm gonna add this to the mix here. Maybe a bit more dubbing. Not much, but a bit more. Add it to the dubbing loop. I'm gonna spin my dubbing loop. There we go. And as I said, this is this is the easiest and and fastest way of making. And of course, you can you can apply the uh, the techniques that I use here. If you do not want to do it on a shank, you can you can basically just tie down the three bundles of uh, of um, 
of craft fur that we do on a, on a, on a single hook as well. And, uh, and then you won't have to bother with the, uh, with the dubbing loop if you find that is bothersome. But, um, but the, the dubbing loop gives you some option that I really like and also the finished fly looks really nice with the dubbing loop. Uh, and, and the uh, and the uh, the craft fur, but this is this is a faster and and perhaps easier way of, of doing something that is fairly close to uh, to that other other way of, of doing it. Just gonna brush out some of the dubbing here with my dubbing brush. go and now we need a shank and for this pair perhaps uh, uh, you can of course change this up for for the first one I made I used a, a one that was about two millimeter no 20 millimeters but I think that uh, that turned out to be quite a big fly so I'm gonna I'm gonna use a slightly smaller one for this one I'm gonna use a what size is that that is perhaps I don't know 15 or so 15 millimeters. What do you think, Stephen? Will, will this? Yeah, this this will be nice. So I have to just carefully just bend this out a bit, so it will fit on the on the actual hook here. There we go. And the reason we take all this. Uh, care and 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 do this with the shank is is to to give the fly even more life um, uh, because the more life the fly has at least in my mind the more fish it will catch but <laughs> who knows I just know that this looks absolutely awesome in the water uh, and, and I really really like trying to incorporate these shanks as much as possible in my fly tying because it just it just gives the fly a new dimension it it it, it makes the fly be something that that perhaps the fish has not seen before so and of course when you're tying on these shanks the big issue is is to cover up the joint uh, where the uh, the shank and the uh, and the actual hook meets um, and and in order to do that we're going to tie down uh, also to make the fly you know move as 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 good as possible but uh, that's why we're placing another bundle of the uh, of the craft fur here so again exactly the same way as we did with the first one going to take the craft fur here um, and then so it's it's not completely even in length, but it's 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 not, you know, uh, six or seven centimeters in difference from the longest to the shortest one either. Uh, cut away the excess. And uh, and the thing about this fly, the only thing that is difficult about this fly of getting of nailing this fly, is to get the right length of this. And what you want is you want it ideally to be maybe two or three centimeters shorter. Than the first bundle, uh, and this will give you the right tapering of uh, of this uh, of this fly here. And you also you want the bundle uh, in the middle here to be uh, less than the uh, than the first one. So I try to measure it out so it, it gets around to there, uh, maybe a centimeter behind the eyes. That's that's what you're going for. And then again, if it's difficult, you're having difficulties with having room enough close to uh, close to the eye, then basically just tie this down in the middle of the actual of the actual shank, and then just moving your tying thread towards the eye of the shank. Then I'm gonna try to cut this off, but I'm gonna taper it so that it tapers down towards the eye so that that it will have a taper and be thinner and thinner towards the eye so so the fly will have the right taper as well yeah this looks this looks perfect actually if you ask me at least <laughs> i'm gonna make another dubbing loop and here again it's important that uh, you have a little less dubbing towards the eye 
than than you have in 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 uh, towards the uh, towards the, uh, the 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 center of the fly here because that will make it easier for you to have the dubbing and and uh, not have the uh, the craft fur to be uh, to stand too much uh, out and up from the from the actual fly here so I tried to get my dubbing into kind of like this uh, uh, this shape here, so so I, I spread it out, so it's it's easier to fit in the dubbing loop. There you go. And as I said, you want ideally you want more dubbing down here than than at the end here. I think I managed to do that. Otherwise, you can you can of course always adjust the amount of dubbing by simply just pulling some of the dubbing out. But you want this this part of the fly to be less dense than the first uh, the first application of uh, of dubbing. Let's see, pulling a bit of the dubbing out here. There we go. And then I'm gonna cut off the dubbing loop. Apply a bit of tying thread. Brush a bit of the dubbing out here. And then the final, uh, the final bundle of uh, of the craft fur. There is an, an enormous amount of, of craft fur on on uh, on one of these uh, these pieces here. So so you will have to tie many. You you'll have uh, you'll be able to tie many many flies with uh, with a piece like this. Again, completely the same way as we did before. Now I, I did it one time, but I still think some of these are a bit too long, so I'm going to pull those back again. There you go. Turn it over, use my comb. And again, the uh, the, the amount of, uh, of craft fur you want for this should be a little less, especially than the first, the first part, but perhaps even a little less than the middle part as well. To give it the right uh, the right look and uh, and the right tapering, and again you want to measure this out so it's not as long as the middle bundle. It sh it should be slightly longer than than that bundle in order to get again the right tapering. So I measure it out. So maybe perhaps now it goes down around to the eye, and uh, and that's 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 a good rule of thumb. So so the first one should be four or five centimeters behind the eye, four centimeters behind the eye. The next one should be maybe two centimeters behind the eye, and the last one should be around the eye. And then fold this around here. Make two loose turns of tying thread before you apply the pressure. There you go. And then of course cut away all the craft fur here. And as I said, you can of course apply this technique with three bundles of craft fur. For some reason, the number three seems to be a, a, a magic number in in fly tying. I mean, three hackles is just awesome. Three bundles of this is just the perfect amount. So for me, three will always be kind of a magic number for for fly tying. For, for trout at least and salmon. I'm gonna do the whip finish. You can apply some varnish or some sap again in my case. Just a small amount and then you'll have a really really awesome way of tying a shrimp with craft fur and dubbing and pretty much nothing else. Of course the shank and the hook. Pull the fly out of the vise, and yeah, baby, <laughs> this looks freaking awesome.
There you have it. <laughs> this will get a sea trout, Stefan. I promise you. There we go. Now you have uh, you can, can see the, the finished result here, and I must say these these three bundles of uh, of craft fur really really do the trick. It's 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 an awesome fly, and this fly goes directly into my fly box. This is gonna be one of those that I'm I'm gonna bring out on on, on the days where the with where the weather is rough, and and the sea trouts are in a feeding frenzy because this is a really really cool way of doing it. You can of course apply this to just a single hook if, if you don't want the shank. Um, the, the complete pattern will work equally as well on, on basically just a hook. But the shank there is, is just something that I feel is, is really, really awesome. And it adds another layer, another dimension to the fly tying. So, as always, you can buy the complete material kit for this fly or any of the other uh, YouTube videos, tutorials we have here uh, at Nordic Anglers, and you can buy that in, in our web shop. Um, that's www.nordicanglers.com. Um, otherwise, I wish you uh, all the best of luck out on the water. Oh, and of course, if you haven't done so, it would mean a lot to us if you would subscribe to the channel. So thank you for watching and good luck.